Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions that the dressing room know what I expect. A good, clean fight. Ya recibieron la instrucción es que una pelea limpia. Legal punches, these trunks are high. Legal punches here for you, legal punches here for you. Touch gloves, glove to both of you. One set los dos. All right, here we go. Tabagon, Acosta. Let's look at the tail of the tape. All right, there's not a lot separating these uh, these flyweights. Acosta's one year older. They're the same height, and they have the same reach. The great thing about this weight class is they are fast. They are dynamic, and they're a whole bunch of fun to watch fight. Yeah, especially these guys. All right, we are all set for our co-main event Ready, of the evening here at Fantasy Springs. Golden Please Boy go. DeZone. Thursday night fights. Box. Tabagon in the black with kind of gold trim and then Acosta in the silver with the blue and red trim. What does Acosta need to do? Acosta needs to stick to his boxing, let his power come naturally because Tabagon is dangerous in exchanges. That's when he clips you. When you go for the kill, when you think he's vulnerable, when you think he's hurt, and you try to go in there and, and stop him, he never stops swinging, and uh, so he'll drop you. He did that to Lewis Neri, who's a top bantamweight right now. And that's at the 118-pound division, and Neri's looked at as one of the better fighters pound for pound out there. Um, he also went the distance with Juan Francisco Estrada, who is Ring Magazine's champion at 115 pounds. Um, so he's a tough guy. So you, you don't want to get too greedy in there. And Acosta is a brilliant boxer. Um, he's, he's got a beautiful jab and combinations. Um, you don't want to put yourself in a position that he found himself against Soto just a few months ago where you get too greedy trying to, to force a stoppage and then you get clipped with the counter punch. Both fighters really kind of kind of working their way into working up that sweat. First of a scheduled 10 rounds. You know, you got to feel the added pressure for Acosta when you come off a uh, a loss that you didn't feel like you were going to lose. There's so much more added pressure put on you to win and win impressively your very next time out. Yeah, it, but in some ways, I think it, it saves the psyche of the fighter who lost when there's controversy attached to it because you feel like it's unfair. He can tell himself, hey, I was leading on the scorecards. Yeah, I got buzzed in, in the 12th round, but I wasn't given an opportunity to protect myself or, you know, to, to fight back from adversity. So I, I think they use it as motivation. Good quick hands by Acosta. Acosta's got really good boxing technique. Um, he's, a, he's a combination puncher. He's a boxer puncher, obviously. Um, but you just look at his, his foundation. You see his, his, his hand and foot placement. Um, somebody taught him really well. Inside 45 seconds, here to go in our first round, our co-main event. Loves to use that left hand. Acosta does. Tabu gone a little more wild. He's got the experience, but he doesn't have the technique. He's got lots of fighting spirit, though. Oh, and Acosta lands again with a left hook. And I, I like what I see from the Puerto Rican fighter. Um, he's, he's boxing discipline. He's not, uh, he's not forcing his punches. He's not, he's not setting too fast of a pace. He's, I think he's being patient. In there, but he's also taking firm command of the fight. All right, first round in the books. Let's send it over to Beto. And the thing with Acosta that's different is that he stayed home for the first time to have a camp. He went back to his native Puerto Rico. Normally, when he was with Freddie Roach, he would go camp two months in L.A. You know, as much as he loved L.A., he said, I love working with Freddie. There's no animosity. I will work with Freddie the next time I have a bigger fight. He just said he wanted to mix it up and stay home. Had that comfort level of being on his island. He said he feels fresher, reinvigorated, and also because he's fighting 112 pounds. He said for the last fight, again, when he was defending the title, he was struggling so bad to get on the scale. The morning of, guys, they had to stand him up to get him on the scale. He said he struggled to make 108. He told himself that night, it's going to be my last one at 108. He still feels like he could have continued, but his corner said maybe it was a good sign because if he would have won, they thought that maybe he would defend at 108. His corner had been telling him, you got to go to 112 soon. Good information there, Beto. What do you make of that, Doug? Yeah, listen, if, if you're struggling that much to make weight, it's time to move up in weight, especially at his age, but really at, at any age. And, and, you know, 
recent events in boxing has, has reminded us just how dangerous this game is. You can lose your life in there. And I think that's a component sometimes, you know, with uh, serious ring injuries and, and ring fatalities when the fighters severely drain themselves to make weight. You know, it shrinks the brain, which means the brain is rattling around in, in, inside your skull. And if you're in a grueling fight that goes 10 or 12 rounds, as Acosta's fight with Soto went, um, you, can, you can incur some serious damage in there if you've really hurt yourself. And so th it, the fact that he struggled that much to make 108 pounds, that probably had something to do with his punch resistance against Soto, who dropped him in the third round, and then, of course, buzzed him badly in the 12th and final round. I don't think there's any question about that that, uh, that has to on some level, and we'll never know how much, but it has to affect the fighter when later that night or the next day, uh, they have to try to fight at a optimum level. Minute gone here in the second round. For the again? second time. Don't do that again. Top of gone is warned, and that time the referee said, do not do it again. Top of can get kind of wild with his punches. He's not known for good technique. He's known for his heart. He's known for his willingness to travel and, and face stiff opposition. All right, now Acosta doing a great job of ducking in, getting his shots in, and ducking out. And we're seeing all of the, the ring generalship and, and craft from Acosta right now. And he's not just a puncher. You look at his record, you know, oh, wow, you, you've won all your fights by knockout. You know, you're, you're, you're a KO artist. You're going out there looking for that chin and, and looking for the moment to drop the bomb. But no, this guy can box. He's got beautiful combinations. He picks punches off well. Um, and he can stick and move if he wants to. I thought you brought up a great point of how his setup is. And I think his setup is conducive to knocking out if he is able to catch his opponent at the right time. The way he, he jumps in and then jumps out. I think, I mean, he's, he's got natural power, but I, I think his technique and his punch placement and his accuracy is a big part of that. A big misses by Tabu Gon as he's just throwing haymakers, hoping at some point that he's going to connect one. Big left hand did connect there. Yeah, Tabu Gon is always dangerous. He's a little bit unpredictable. He's kind of unorthodox. But we're seeing some beautiful boxing from Acosta. And just with his footwork, he is controlling the distance of this fight. All right, round number two in the books. Let's look back quickly at... Well, first, let's look at the slip there in that second round. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Um... Tabugan lost his footing in mid-swing. He did get tapped to the chest. We're seeing some nice highlights right here with the Filipino fighters back to the ropes. And you can see Acosta is controlling the distance. He's not staying inside too long. You know, he lands his punches, then he gets out of range. Plenty of emotion there in the corner of Acosta. You can see that his power on his punches, at least through two rounds, really, really strong. Yeah, he gets tremendous leverage on his shots. And, and you know, part of the power is his natural power, his athleticism, but part of it is his technique. All right, here we go, round number three. Just across the top of the hour, welcome to everybody watching Thursday Night Fights across the country, wherever you might be watching. Coach Dougie Fresh, Beto Durant, live on the zone, syndicated across the country. The only place to watch live boxing on a Thursday night. Beautiful footwork. He goes in around the combination. Goes to the body with both hands. And you get the sense that Tabu Gan is just looking to counterpunch him on his way in, hoping to catch him in exchange. I think he's hoping that he's going to get one big shot, and that's going to put Acosta down. Stop! 
Well, you have to imagine, you know, if you're if you're fighting a guy who's coming off a stoppage, even if it's controversial, you're figuring he's a little bit vulnerable, whether that's it's a physical thing or a psychological thing. Another big wild right hand by Tabagon. Yeah, but the more I think about it, uh, I'm thinking that that loss that Acosta suffered was just a really bad night. For me. Now that I know that he struggled so much to make 108 pounds, um, obviously he knew nothing about Soto. Nobody knew anything about Soto. He was just an unknown prospect out of Mexico. He wasn't like a, a legit contender or anything like that. But he got dropped in the third round, and then I think the game plan just flew out the window for him. He got up, you know, with, with hubris. Uh, his, his ego was bruised. Um, and then he was he was out for vengeance after that. He was stalking, and um, I think uncharacteristically uncharacter trying to force the knockout instead of letting it come. And um, he put the punching before the boxing. And uh, even though he was he was winning the fight, he still left himself vulnerable for that counter left hook in the, in the 12th and final round. Costa still using that left hand very very nicely here in this third round inside of a minute. Really starting to find his range now is Acosta. If you notice, Coach, Acosta does a really good job of picking punches off. Perry. He keeps his hands right, he keeps his hands high, he keeps them in front of him, but he'll, he'll catch uh, Tabugan's punches, you know, midway. You know, he, so he, he's very good at anticipating what Tabugan is going to do to be able to do that. Oh! He, he got hurt. And that, that is the kind of punch that Tabugan was looking for. He was looking to catch Acosta between shots. And he found it with that left hook. It was so quick. It was so quick. And for the first time, Acosta moved away from Tabugan <laughs> to regain himself by the end of the round. So I want to see that again because it was incredibly quick. Let's go to the early one in that round. And then we'll see the late one. Oh, wow. the, yeah, counter left hook, and Acosta was stunned. You see his eyes glaze over. I think his legs seized up. His knees buckled a little bit. Ooh. There it is. And Tabugan landed his hook before Acosta was able to land his. See, they were both loading up with left hooks at the same time. I thought Acosta did a good job of not overreacting, but you could tell that both of those really stung him. Okay? All right, so here is Dougie Fresh's scorecard, and you gave Tabak on that round. Yeah, now listen, under amateur rules, or if we just go by CompuBox, Acosta won that round. He was outboxing him, he landed more punches, but by professional rules, I mean, if you hurt your opponent, that matters in professional boxing. All right, here we go. Round number four, both fighters in a lather, and this has turned into a very competitive, fun fight. Yes, it's getting interesting. We've gone from a, a beautiful boxing as exhibition from Acosta to an actual fight. And that is what Tabugan wants. He wants to suck Acosta out of a boxing match and make it a brawl. That's how sluggers beat boxers. Well, he is not scared to load up and just fly. Good combination there by Acosta. Sometimes the, the brawler or the fighter or the slugger will take a boxer out of his game by forcing the action, forcing a, a fast tempo and putting forth a high punch volume. And other times they got to get lucky like Tabu Gan and, and hope to land that perfect shot that hurts the boxer and then just changes the complexion of everything. You got to be able to seize the moment when that happens though. Unfortunately for him in the last round, it was at the end of the round, so he was unable to continue what those two shots got him throughout that round. The best believe he's looking for it right now. It is so much fun to watch two fighters with two completely different game plans. A beautiful combination with the body. Here, throwing with authority, with purpose. And the difference between the way Acosta goes to the body and the way junior middleweight prospect Raul Curiel went to the body is with Acosta, the leverage is better on the punch. The technique's a little bit sharper. 
Well, Tabagon stumbles there for a second, does not go down, but Costa continues to come in with the three and four punch combinations. And again, oh. Bring him up, bring it up, bring it up. up. The thing about Tabugan, he's not going to be intimidated by Acosta just because Acosta, like him, is big for the weight. Um, and just because Acosta has that, that vaunted punching power. Like I said, Tabugan has been in the ring with bigger fighters, with higher level fighters, even than Acosta. Um, Juan Francisco Estrada, who I alluded to, right now he's Ring Magazine's junior bandweight champ. That's at 115 pounds. Um, he's in everybody's pound for pound. Like he's inside the, the, the pound for pound top 10. Lewis Neri is pretty close, and he, he's looked at as a top bantamweight, which the, the weight limit is 118 pounds. So he's used to trading punches with bigger guys than Costa. All right, so that round comes to an end, but Tabagon starting to find his range and connecting with Acosta. We're back. We're back, Fantasy Springs Resort Casino, live for Golden Boy in the Zones Thursday night fight. Good one here in our co-main event, Acosta and Tabugan. And I think that Tabugan has the fight going in the direction that he would like. How does he get it to continue to be a brawl, even though Acosta does not want that? I think he has to take a few more risks. He has to he has to force Acosta out of his comfort zone. If he allows, if you allow a boxer to set the the, the tempo, the pace. Oh, oh. now hook, delayed delayed reaction knockdown. Tabu got down. Five, the six, count to five, seven, six, eight. You okay? What a Walk quick Hands left up. hook by Acosta. This will continue. And now, big. Combinations for Acosta. Like I told you, Tabugan is dangerous when he's hurt. He will fire back. Acosta has to be careful. Tabugan probably still has has cobwebs in his head, but he's clear enough to, to see the target. And wow. He's still swinging. Just throwing. Oh, oh that's it. It's over. Tabugan is down. He is out, and it's over. Beautiful knockout, excellent stoppage. That was a powerful left hook. Tabugan had not fully recovered from the knockdown. And he caught that punch flush on the jaw. For Acosta, his 21st win as a professional, and all 21 have come by knockout. And that was an impressive 60 seconds here in this round as Tabagon, he let it all out of the bag and he just could not connect and Acosta was dynamic and precise. You know, his best chance of catching Acosta again was in his own corner, in that duress, while Acosta was going in for the finish to catch him, but his head wasn't clear enough to aim his punches properly. And that's an excellent win for Acosta. Um, you know, if, if there's going to be a rematch between Acosta and Soto, who's in our main event, it's going to have, have to happen at 112 pounds rather than 108 pounds. Because something tells me the Puerto Rican feels really good. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. So he, he softened the Filipino fighter up with hooks to the body, and the, he brought that hook back up to the head. And I think we're going to see uh, a replay of the, the, the first knockdown here. You see, Tabugan is waiting on the boxer. And you don't want to let you don't want to let the boxer set the set the tempo or, or give him room to operate. And that's what Tabugan did. You know, once Tabugan went down, it was just a matter of time before Acosta was able to get close enough and connect yeah. enough. And here comes the finish. He, yeah. he backs Tabugan up into his own corner. Tabugan has the wherewithal to hold on. He's trying to fire back. And Acosta controlling the distance there. Picking his shots. Misses with the right. Gets a left in there. Lands a right. One-two combination. Boy, they're just... Yeah, gets under those, those haymakers and then lands that left hook. That was beautiful. Right on the button. There is such a difference between how Acosta throws his punches and how uh, Tabagon throws his punches. So precise 
measured, understands the distance, and was in no danger at that point of getting caught himself, and it was just a matter of time. Yeah, I think um, it won't be long before Acosta targets the world title holders at 112 pounds. And if he can make his name at flyweight, and he can move up to maybe junior bantamweight, he can make some good money. If you don't think four pounds or six pounds or eight pounds makes a difference in fighting, then you just don't know. It makes all the difference yeah, in even, the world. Even great fighters, um, as, as we look at these, these these punch stats, and you see the difference in the, 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 the punch connect percentage, 36 of Acosta's punches overall landed in comparison to 10% of Tabugan. Tabugan just looking for that one shot. That's the kind of stats you're going to wind up with when you're just looking for that one lucky shot. Well, it made for a very entertaining fight, no doubt. But as the fight started to go along, you really started to see the expertise and the, uh, the skill. Um, I, I, I'm, I always have the power. I'm going to have that